On our way to Palsbo, we saw this museum called the Under Undersea Museum. It's um, in Keyport, which is just outside of Palsbo, and it's um, ran by the U.S. Navy, and admission is free. They're open six days a week, closed on Tuesday, and their time is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. is when they're open. We'll go check it out. Turn right on McKittrick Road. Turn left on Garnett Way. You've arrived at your destination. This is a deep sea submergent vehicle known as a DSV. And that bulb at the very bottom is where the crew would operate it from. I have a little tiny window to look out. It's kind of bizarre looking. It reminds me of like a whale. And this submarine would go out and it would investigate Places where ships have went down or all kinds of things down in the deep. Its uh, deepest dive was 20,000 feet. That's incredible. And they have another one down here too. This one down here, this uh, green one was used to rescue subs that were disabled at the bottom of the sea. 1960s through the 70s they used this to rescue submarines that have couldn't come up to the surface. And they'd go down and they would be able to get some of the crew members out with it. This is the Mystic. As you can see here, they would hover over the top of the disabled submarine and they would uh, connect to it some way and allow the uh, Navy men to come back up into this rescue sub through that hatch right there. Pretty amazing that they could do that. And they actually ran this from uh, 1970 to 2008. Oh wow. I thought it was the 60s through the 70s, nope. so I misspoke. inside the museum and a lot of submarine type stuff I was not in the Navy I was in the Army so I'm not very familiar with this this is their insignia yeah so 
And this is for the submarines. Like I said, I was not in the Navy. I was in the Army. So a lot of this stuff I don't know much about. Quite a neat little uh, museum for the price of free. We've all heard the sound of the dive, dive, dive horn. Well, this is what it really sounds like in the submarine. Says information gathering tools. These are some of the equipment they use to gather specimens off the floor of the ocean and out of the water. This is what pressure underwater can do to styrofoam cups at 10,000 feet. It makes them really, really small. This is what they call a spar torpedo. It's a, basically a bomb on the end of a stick that they would attach to the front of a boat and then they would run the boat into others and it would blow up. As you can see, here's one here. Sorry for the reflecting light. And they would attach it to the front of the boat and then push the boat or uh, somehow motor the boat into other boats to blow them up. This is the floating keg mine that they used back in 1777. They would float down the rivers and then inside them they had a flint and a striker pin and everything needed to uh, set the gunpowder ablaze and they would just float down the river until somebody ran into them. This is what they call a frame torpedo and they would set them below the water line. Here they are set up getting ready to put underwater and they would put them underneath the water and then the ships would run into them. Back in the Civil War era It's an M6 mine. And this were, was a mine that they would drop from airplanes. The destructor mine. There they are dropping from an airplane. A6.
is an MK60 mine. And they would drop these from airplanes as well. Drop it down through the water to the bottom of the sea. And then it would shoot another torpedo when it senses a submarine to destroy it. Here are some more torpedoes. Today there's a busload of kids here. That's what you're hearing in the background. They're from the school. And some more torpedoes. They've got a lot of stuff here. They've even got uh, the modern submarine torpedo tubes. That's what the tubes look like that they put them in. Here's a picture of the DSRVs attached to a submarine, like the one we saw outside earlier. You can see how it kind of attached to it, and then the Navy men would come up through the hatch into the rescue DSRV. Here's a ballistic missile submarine model. Of what it looked like inside. They have the equipment room from the USS Greenling and they have reset it up inside here. They got the everything in here. Here's looking through a real telescope that goes outside out into the parking lot. These are the submarines that we were looking at earlier. Pretty cool. So this whole section here is about animals in the Navy or used by the Navy. Marine mammal missions where they would go down and do mine detections. The dolphins would detect marked enemy mines in shallow waters, intruder defense. They would uh, use dolphins and sea lions to protect piers, ships, and harbors by detecting enemy divers and undersea vehicles. And then uh, object recovery. Sea lions find and mark training equipment for recovery in this picture here. Mine buoy marker used by dolphins that put their snout in that yellow cup up front. 
And then here's the harness that they would put on them. This is quite a museum. They've got everything here. I'm just showing you a very small part of it. Um, well worth your time. That's how they transport the dolphins. Navy, one man, one atmosphere diving system. These are all their diving suits, masks, and breathing equipment. My neutralization vehicle. That's above 1970 prototype. Remotely operated. My neutralization early 1980s to present is when it's used. Maximum depth is 3,000 feet. Length is 12 feet. And there it is. <laughs> 